These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Well, let's say that you're talking about the derivative of a function with respect to time, what does that tell you about the function? Well, it tells you the rate at which the function is changing when you change the time. So what are the units for a derivative? Well, you can kind of see the units from this notation. They're the f units over the, the, um, the units down here. So here the units would be whatever the units are for f. over the units for t. I guess since I'm using t, I'm probably thinking of this in terms of seconds. So for example, if f was population, then this would give you people per, per year, say. And it would tell you how many extra people you get each year. But there's another uh, way to measure how quickly something is changing, which instead of focusing on the rate of change, you can focus on the percentage change. Uh, and that's what uh, this section is about, seeing how to focus on percentage changes. For example, you might say that uh, the population of a country is going up by 2 million people per year. Well, that would be like a derivative, 2 million people per year. But maybe it would be more interesting to say that the population was going up at 3% per year or 4% per year. Well, one thing that we can do with any function is we can take the logarithm of that function, and it turns out that if you take the derivative of the logarithm of a function, that tells you the percentage change. Okay. Or, in a sense, that approximates the percentage change. This would tell you the approximate percentage change in f uh, if you increase the t variable by 1. So, for example, the approximate percentage change in the population if one year goes by. By the way, we should say one more thing about how to calculate percentage changes. How, how do you calculate percentage change if you're not thinking about calculus? Um, big minus small over original times 100. That's right. And times in 100 is just to get out of decimals right. and into percents. So the basic formula is the change over the level. The percentage change in something is the change in the function over the level. This would give you the answer as a decimal, and like you said, you could multiply by 100 to turn it into a percentage. And that's what this turns out to give us. It gives us the percentage change. So is that when we do f prime t over f of t, or is that when we do negative p f? I think like these are the main two formulas in Right. Okay. Yeah, so we haven't start, quite started talking about elasticity yet. Uh, all we're, so we are talking about this okay. formula here. Okay. If you want to look at ours as well, you can. Okay, I think I have the same book, uh, so okay. it's just a different edition, but so far they seem uh, to be okay. same. Okay. So this tells us what you, what you get when you take the derivative of the log of a function. Uh, but this, should, this is really the same thing as this. Because remember, the derivative tells you approximately how much f is going to change. So this is basically giving us this information up here. The derivative tells us how much we're going to change in one year, and this is the level of the function. So this is basically a proof that we are getting the percentage change. And in fact, we should see where this is coming from here. So what we're basically doing here is we're using the chain rule because we have an outside function and an inside function. The outside function is the logarithm, and the inside function is f. 
Well, remember that the chain rule says that the derivative of a composite function is the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. OK. So first of all, we need to know what's the derivative of the outside function, which is a logarithm. Do you remember, how do you take the derivative of a logarithm? So the derivative of the logarithm is just 1 over f. Right. And then what's the inside function? Well, the inside function is f. So here's the derivative of the inside function, and we just proved this formula. Uh, so this formula here is actually something that um, you could memorize, but it really should, is just a straightforward application of the chain rule. Okay. okay. Remember that the way to get a percentage change is to put the change over the level. Well, you can see how taking the derivative puts you over the level because uh, you can see how taking the derivative of the log puts you over the level because the derivative of the log is 1 over the function. All right. So using the chain rule, we can see that the derivative of this really is this formula. And we know that this is giving us the approximate percentage change, the percent rate of change. So um, I guess we could look at a sample problem. And we could look at uh, example one. Let me see if I have the same example in my book that you had in yours. Sure. So when we tried that problem, try not to, to look at the explanation there, but uh, let's see how we would answer that. So now we get basically, the question is asking us for the percentage change. And we have two different approaches for finding the percentage change. We can calculate the derivative of the function and put it over the function, or we can take the log of the function and take that derivative. And which method should we use? Well, whichever method is more convenient for the problem that we're working on. Okay. We want to use whichever of these is more convenient for the problem that we're working on. Well, in this case, it's not particularly convenient to take the log of this function, because the log of a sum doesn't simplify in any nice way. Right. If you have, say, the log of x plus y, there's no nice simplification you can make of that. That's not just log x plus log y. So in this case, we can just use our basic formula for uh, figuring a person in change and find the derivative and put it over the level. So what would be the derivative of this function? 0.04 minus 0.13 e to the negative 2. Good. So then we get that our percentage change here is, well, the derivative is 0.04 minus 0.13 e to the negative t. And what should I plug in for f of t on the bottom? I'll just plug in this formula. And then you would just plug in 0 and then all to about 1. That's right. Now they specifically asked us for the percentage change at 0 and at 1. That's right. So we could plug in the number 0 here to find what the percentage change would be uh, approximately um, in year 0. And then we could plug in the number 1. Now, this formula would give us the percentage change as a decimal. And then we'd have to take one more step of multiplying by 100 to turn it into a percent. Okay, that makes sense? Yeah. Okay.